Hi everyone. I'm back. Well, since we are locked out of the school, teachers too, I had to buy a document camera and unfortunately it only records in 15 minute videos. So when you see these on canvas, you'll see there's quite a few videos for every section. And that's why, because I can only record 15 minutes at a time. I try to watch the time once in a while, it cuts me off, but um, I'll always pick up from where I left off. So today we're going to be taking notes on our very last section of chapter six, 6.8, the most fun section ever. So this is where we learn about I, the imaginary numbers, which are part of the complex number system. So let's start with the definition of I. We have learned up until now that whenever we take the square root of a negative number, for example, square root of negative four, up until this lesson, we've always written non-real number. Well, now we're going to put a number to it. It's still non-real, but we're going to put a value to it and it will be an imaginary number. And this one, for instance, the square root of four is two and the negative is going to come out as an I. So now instead of saying the square root of negative four is a non-real number, now we'll say it is two I. So where does the imaginary numbers come from? Well, they come from taking the square roots, not fourth root, not sixth root, the square root of a negative number. So the square root of negative one is defined as I. And you could call that one I, the square root of one is one and then the negative pops out as an I. Keep in mind, this doesn't work for cube roots because I have students on the test that write I's with the cube roots. It does not apply to the cube roots. It's only for square roots that we get imaginary numbers. So let's um, talk about the second one. So if we have I equals the square root of negative one, what if we squared both sides? Oh, let's get a different color pen. If we squared both sides, we would end up with I squared equals, and we learned that squares and square roots undo each other, so negative one. And that's where this comes from. So really the only thing you have to remember is that a negative under a square root comes out as I. And from there, you can derive this. If you want to remember that I squared is negative one, that's great because it's all over your test. I think there's three or four problems where you have to know that. So I would say the two things you want to highlight are these from this box. So anytime you see a negative under a square root, it will come out as I, and then you take the square root of the number, just like we always have. Anytime you see I squared, you will replace it with negative one. We're never allowed to leave I squared in an answer. So this is just the regular definition. So the negative comes out as I, then you take the square root of B. So not really anything new to learn. You already know how to do square roots from the rest of this chapter. So really the only new thing is that negative is going to come out of the radical as an I. So let's look at some examples here. Simplify in terms of I. So there's a negative under a square root that comes out as I square root of 49 is seven. And I have some students write I seven on the test. No, the I goes second after the number. So seven I, just like a letter. If you were doing variables, you wouldn't write X seven, you write seven X. So I is not a variable, but you write the final answer just like you would. 
and here I put a little note. Our I is written in front of a radical whenever there's a radical because students will write things like this on the test. And I'll go, hmm, that I looks like it's under the radical. I know they probably meant this, but sometimes it's really hard to tell whether it's under the radical or not. So anytime there's a radical in the problem, we put the I in front of it so it doesn't go at the end. So square root of negative 8, we have the I coming out. The negative comes out as an I. And 8 is 3 twos. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And as we learned previously in the chapter, anytime you have pairs, the pair comes out as a single when it's a square root. So that's where they got the answer to the I from the negative, what's left under the radical? Radical 2. So we break down radical 8 just like we always have, but because of the negative, we're adding that I in. Same thing with 12. So this is just saying make your answer negative. So that comes over. This comes out as an I. Then we break down 12. 12 is 4 times 3, which would be 2, 2, 3. Two twos, as we said, comes out as a single two. So then we have our negative from up front, our two from here, our i from the negative sign, and what's left under the radical? Three. So just like we would have broke down uh, radical 12 in the past, two rad three, but now we have that negative out front and the negative underneath the square root comes out as I. So that's the only new thing in this lesson is putting that I there. Breaking down the radicals you already know. So let's try one on our own. So I see the negative so I know my answer is going to have an I and I say what is the square root of 121? Well 11 times 11 is 121 so I just write 11 take the negative out as an I. Super easy. What about this one? Ooh, can we break down 3? We can't, right? It can't come out of the radical, but the negative does have to come out, so we write it as I radical 3. So the negative comes out as an I. The 3 stays under because there's not a pair of 3's. There's only one 3, not enough to get out of jail. Ooh, here's that one I told you to memorize. 32. Remember, that's five twos. So let's put the I out in front, just so we don't forget it. And then we have five twos. And if you don't have it memorized, remember you can always do a, a tree over here, but I'm hoping by now you have that memorized. So then we have two twos and two twos. So each of those will come out as a two. So now I can see my answer is going to be 2 times 2, 4, I, and then there's one 2 left under, so 4, I, radical 2. So just like you broke down square root of 32 the whole chapter, the only difference now is we have that negative underneath the square root that comes out as I. But the radical part's the same. Okay, anytime we have operations where there are negatives under a radical, we always have to remove the i's first. We can't multiply, we can't divide before we remove the i's. Because what's going to happen, if you did multiply, you would have gotten positive 144. Well, what's the square root of 144? 12. Well, look what the answer is. So we can't multiply first. First we take out the i's. We say, what's the square root of negative 36? 6i. What's the square root of negative 4? 2i. This is multiplication, so we do 12i squared. But remember what I had you highlight up here? i squared equals negative 1. So the minute you see i squared, you replace it with negative 1. So that instead of 12i squared, it's 12 times negative 1. Hence the answer negative 12. Okay, so let's practice. Practice makes perfect. 
So we can't multiply until we remove the i's. So the square root of negative 4 is 2i. So the square root of 4 is 2. The negative comes out of the square root as an i. Square root of negative 1, or excuse me, negative 81 is 9i. And now that we have the negatives removed from underneath the radical, now we're allowed to multiply. So that would be 18i squared, because remember we add exponents and multiplication. And let's write this really big right here. i squared equals negative 1, so I don't have to keep sliding the paper up to the box. So I would just bubble that. Highlight it, whatever you have to do so you remember it. So we're not allowed to leave an i squared in an answer. So we replace it with negative 1, which I showed you how we got that right here. And that becomes 18 times negative 1. So my final answer would be negative 18. Same rules go for multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Remove the i's first, then do your multiplication or your addition or your subtraction. So on C, we have a division problem. So square root of negative 81 is 9i because of the negative. Square root of 9 is 3, and then we add the i because of the negative. And just like any other number or symbol, anything divided by itself is 1. So these i's become 1. And then 9 divided by 3 is just 3. Beautiful, fun, easy. Students usually do really good on this section on the test. There's four questions from this section on the test. Okay, so D, we have the negative. We have to take it out as I. But 3 can't be broke down, so we leave it under the radical. It doesn't have enough to get out of jail. And same thing with the next one. Now that we've taken the i's out, now we're allowed to multiply. So i times i is i squared. Radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9. Both of those can be simplified. i squared, we're going to turn into negative 1. Square root 9 is just 3. So this problem turns into negative 1 times 3, which is negative 3. So multiply the outer numbers, adding the exponents, multiply the numbers under the radical, and then simplify each. So negative 1 times 3. Okay, let's do one more here. So again, we can't cancel any of this. We have to take the i's out, so we'll get i square root 32 over i square root 2. Then we need to break down the radicals, simplify, so we have our i's out. So 32, we already know, is 5 twos. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. This we can't do anything with because there's not enough to get out of jail. There's only one 2 there. So as we said earlier, this comes out as a 2. This comes out as a 2 because we're circling pairs. So this is 2 times 2. So as we showed in the example above, I think it was E or C up here, it's going to be 4i radical 2. I'm going to move the paper over a little bit so we don't go off camera. So 4i radical 2 over i radical 2. So who can tell me what my answer is? Four, ding, 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 ding. And the reason? Radical 2 divided by radical 2 is 1. I divided by I is 1. So what's left? Just the 4. 
and we'll pick up from there on our next video.